Hello and welcome to Climbing Daily and welcome to Mallorca. We're here with Rock Busters uh, and this is Yanni who does climbing holidays as part of that whole thing, getting clients in, teaching them, showing them the good locations. And behind us is one of the most famous deep water solos in the world. Behind us there is a famous arch, Les Pontas where Chris Sharma did his 9A plus route. Well, we've been uh, climbing yesterday. The rainy weather is a bit of a killer today, so we haven't been climbing, but we thought this would be a good opportunity for you as an expert to give everyone at home some tips on deep water soloing. Okay, so let's start off with the sort of obvious thing, which is it's called deep water soloing. Uh, with solo, it implies it's a bit more dangerous than, let's say, rope climbing or something like that. What are the things you can do to keep yourself safe when you're deep water soloing? Okay, so obviously it's called deep water solo, so make sure the water is deep enough. So swim around, check it out. If you're not sure, use a rope, put the end of, like on the end of the rope, put the stone in and just dip it in. Make sure there's like a three, four meters below you. Check the things and environment around. Check the places for easy exit out of the water if you fall. That's a good point because the water is softer than the ground, obviously. So we're expecting it to be a, a little bit easier. But if you hit that water wrong, especially from a, you know a high position, you're going to hurt yourself and you might, as you said, knock yourself out. So what is a good position to fall? Obviously, you try to fall like straight, like feet first. So try to fall like a leg first. Close yourself like this, so you don't fall like very open because it can hurt, you know. You're not gonna die, but it hurts. Some of the falls you can't really expect. So if that happen, like try to minimize the surface of your body by like closing yourself like this and protect your head or something. Like less surface, less pain. So let's talk about uh, chalk here, because we're climbers, we like using chalk, it improves the grip, uh, but we're by the sea. The sea is wet and chalk and wet don't really go together. So what are your solutions for dealing A, with that damp moisture you might get from the sea, and B, just how do you take a chalk bag up one of these routes? Because the second you fall in, it's gonna get soggy and soaking wet, right? So first of all, I would recommend or we use the liquid chalk. I always like uh, leave this on the ledge on the beginning of the climb. So lots of the climbs and places where you're gonna go climbing, they have a small ledge where you start lots of climbing. So you can leave this. And why is liquid chalk better than sort of powdered chalk? Uh, because why can't you just leave a chalk bag on, on, on a ledge and just powder your hands up? Why, why is liquid chalk better? Because it dries your hands first of all you know like and also it stays on your hand a little bit longer than the normal chalk but my suggestion is to use the liquid chalk check out the projects whatever make out the moves and stuff but when you ready to go to send like take a chalk bag you know lots of chalk bags all of the chalk bag they have like a soft thing inside which gets very soaked if you fall in the water so i have ripped it out and I'm using only the like very light and like thin material from outside. Okay, my final question for you, and this might sound a bit obvious, right? But in Europe, when you're on a sport climbing trip, there's usually a line of bolts up the wall. Uh, there's sometimes a name written at the bottom. You know where you're going. But with deep water soloing, you turn up to a sea cliff. It's just a big expanse of sea cliff, and it's hard to know where those routes start. So how do you find out the areas and the climbs you want to do? Is there a guidebook as per normal climbing? Yeah, it's pretty similar to normal climbing. Like in Mallorca, you have uh, two guidebooks. One of the deep water solo guidebook is issued by Spanish Desnivel. One is from English Rockfax. You can both find them in a local climbing shop in Palma de Mallorca. Basically, it's the same thing. You know, it tells you the information about how to get to the place, uh, what grades and routes are there. It all has like a picture, so it's easy to find. It has also like the landing, kind of like a danger. Mm -hmm. So it's called like S0 to S4 or 5. So easy, easy to find your way around. If you give one golden top tip to someone starting deep water soloing, what would it be? 
Like my top secret is like a little plastic bottle I always have in my pants. <laughs> okay, so you, you climb, you get to a ledge, your hands might be a bit greasy. When you can stop, you have a moment, you squeeze it on and then you do yeah. the hard bit. Of the Does it not get wet when you fall in the water? No, it's not. It's, it's closed, so it's fine. Woo. Now listen guys, deep water soloing is one of those things that is a bit tricky, especially if you haven't done it before and you don't know where to go. So something like Rockbusters is a good place to start because these guys show you where to go, they have experts, they have guides, it's all very easy. So do check out Rockbusters, the link is in the description below. Uh, we're going to find this break in the rain, go and climb Espontas uh, very, very quickly and we'll see you guys on the next Climbing Daily. Bye!